Okay. So, I do, do I need to introduce myself? I'm Tiffany. Most of you know me. Um, this is just the review and study guide prep for your apprentice test that many of you will take at the spring conference or fall conference, whatever you decide. Um, I took mine a year ago, I think, at the last spring conference. Oh, um, I remember. I was trying to think. Yeah, yeah, it was the last spring conference. Okay, so I don't, I'm going to be like real on, informal about this. So a lot of this is going to seem like a review and be pretty basic, but as we discussed before, um, we're just going to go over everything that we need to just touch base on. All right, so, and forgive me if I don't do this correctly. Hang on here from the beginning. Can everybody see my screen okay? Yes, yes. perfectly. Okay. Now I can't see my screen. Okay, one of the things that we would just go over is just your basic hive parts. Something to remember is... Um, make sure, um, make sure everything that you list is exactly what it is called. Don't call things what you call it. <laughs> if you call it a hick and my bob, try to figure out what that term really is. And so, you know, your basic parts of your hive stand, we're going to go just from the bottom is your hive stand. Uh, those can be wood, they can be blocks, they can be metal, they can be plastic, they can be really anything that we need just as long as it's about some people say six to 18 inches off the ground i think that just depends on the beekeeper though then you have your bottom board or screen bottom board whichever is your preference that you run uh your deep hive body for your brood chamber uh and those are you know stacked one two however many and then your mediums for your honey supers frames in all of your uh brood boxes and Honey supers, your inner cover, and then your outer cover. Uh, some things that you might have to go over is the functionality for those. Does anybody have any questions on um, any function? I know that. Do, really... I, have, do I have to say, uh, Kathy? Do I have to say uh, like an go. entrance reducer? You might have to say an entrance reducer. Okay. But but when you're building, wait, when you like building a hive, not necessarily, really only if it asks you for one. Okay. You might have a picture with one and you might not, or you might not have a picture at all. Okay. Okay. Next is identifying the different bee casts of honeybees. And we know that we have workers, drones, and queens. Those can be questions just about anything. And they're just the, the, you know, your identifiers for each cast. So your queen, obviously she's your largest bee. She doesn't have any pollen baskets. She doesn't have wax glands. She's the only fertile bee in the copy. She sticks out because she's got that big old booty. You have your drones. So those are boy bees from your infertile eggs. No stinger, they have a round butt. There are large eyes that meet together. No pollen baskets, no wax glands. And your workers are, you know, small body, pollen baskets, all female, wax glands. They don't lay eggs, unless you have a laying worker. Uh, barb stingers. And so I just listed a few things on there. That is for you. You're making your own study guide. So you can go off of that. List everything that identifies a queen for you. List everything that identifies a drone for you. List everything that identifies a worker for you. I'm going to keep going. Does anybody have any questions? I need to stop anywhere. Next, we have um, stages of brood. A lot of these are probably going to be for identification. Some of them might be questions. 
So make sure that you can identify them visually and that you can describe them on paper. Eggs, larva, cat brood. Uh, I didn't put it on here, but you would be probably who of you to know the difference between um, flat cat brood, worker cat brood, and um, drone brood, which I don't have a picture of, but we all know is a larger. So they're puffed up. They look like little popcorns on there. And we all know that those queen cells kind of look like little peanuts. So we know what those look like. Okay, something that this this whole chart <laughs> you should know. So these mm -hmm. are your days within the stage of each B cast. So workers are in the egg stage for three days, in the larva for six, the pupa for 12, or cat brood for 12, with a total of 21 days. Drones are in the egg stage for three days, a larva for six and a half, pupa or cat brood for 14 and a half, for a total of 24 days. Queens, three days in an egg, five and a half days in a larva, cap pupa for seven and a half for a total of 16 days. Now there are all kinds of charts all over the place for these, but this is the chart. Is anybody writing anything down? Can I keep going? You keep going. Another thing that we're gonna to touch base on is reading a frame, just your identifying. So identifying what your what an egg looks like in a frame, larva looks like in a frame, cat brood, pollen, capped honey. And something else is to note is I, I selected this frame just because I zoomed in on it here, but maybe a little bit too far. So obviously your your brood is down in the center of that frame and it kind of looks like a rainbow, but we only have about a half a rainbow. So you have your brood and then you have your pollen. And then on the top, in the top outside corners, you have your capped honey. And generally that looks like a really pretty rainbow. And that is something that you'll have to identify. Um, both on paper, but also you may have to identify it on frame. Configuration of colony frames for placement. And this, I just did a regular 10, 10 frame that I think that's pretty standard um, in this book. Is that right, Deb? It's just this fourth book, right? Yes. Okay. So um, for your regular 10, 10 frames, you have spares or empty frames on your outside. Sometimes they might be drawn out. Sometimes they're not. Most of mine really aren't. And your next frames in are honey and then pollen and then your brood chamber. So you've got your eggs in the middle, food, and spares. Mm -hmm. So as long as you remember that, that is also handy to know when building a split. Honey is carbs, pollen is protein. Know it, love it, remember it forever. Foundation. I couldn't find a really good picture of foundation on my camera there, so that's a picture of me and Christy at the mill. Uh, foundation, so black foundation is best for viewing eggs, according to the fourth book. The yellow foundation is best for inspecting honey. And your standard sizes are deep, mediums, and shallows. IPMs, it's important to know what an IPM is, which is Integrated Pest Management, and that stands for Identifying the Problem, Determining Your Threshold, 
assess your options, select and apply your controls, evaluate success, and record your results. That goes with anything that is, is going on in your hive. If, if you were presented with a problem, think about that problem and then formulate your IPM. And you may have to write that out or you may not. Uh, treatment options and active ingredients. These are just, I just picked a few out. Um, there are lots of them. Formic Pro Mitoid Strips, your active ingredient is formic acid. Uh, Apistan, I don't even know how to say that. Fluvinate is what I'm going to call it. Uh, oxalic acid, it's just oxalic acid. Uh, Apivar, your active ingredient is Amitraz. Apigard, your active ingredient is Thymol. And Hopguard, which I've never used before, your active ingredient is potassium salts and hop beta acids. I forgot an S on there. These, you may have a situation where you have questions that ask you just directly what they are, or you may have, um, you may see a package of it. And all of that pertinent information there is gonna be covered up. It's just gonna be a package and it's gonna say, I'm X, and then you need to find out what your active ingredient is for that. So if you're not familiar with the packaging of these, I would look at the packaging for all of these. Okay, and that is really all I had for slump. For the rest of that, I just wanted to review facts, identify tools, equipment. We can just kind of chit chat. I don't know how to escape all of this. There's something okay. on top. It tells you to, to end sharing. Oh, Tiffany? Oh, hold on. I'm trying to get back. It's probably in your um, Zoom application where it says end sharing on the top. Mine's on top. There you go. Oh. Well, I X, I X out of that, so I hope that. Okay. Is I that missed okay? The, I okay? I missed the slide yeah, about good. the frames. What did you have on the slide about frames and foundation? I saw black, yellow, and deep medium. Mm -hmm. And then it I, was got, just, I got interrupted. It was just very basic that black foundation is best for viewing eggs and yellow uh -huh. foundation is best for inspecting honey. Yes. That's not always my personal opinion. Yeah. But we're not going on personal opinions. Right. Okay. Um, I didn't I mean I didn't try to rush through anything, but I just it's really just the two of us here or the two of you here. So I didn't want to bore you and go on about the basics. But don't overthink it. Um, as far as that goes, those are just some things that I touched base on that we don't always think about either that are pretty important. Um, the rest of it really um, are just going to be some situations like, let's see, do B space. We know B space is three eighths of an inch or nine millimeters. Um, cured honey. Is 18.6. Mm -hmm. They don't care what you think. It's 18.6. Yes. So <laughs> I, I try to remember all the different diseases and how to identify that, them. Yep. And that's something else that, that we're getting with. I, I didn't make a slide for, a, I, right. we could just do like a, a zillion the, of those. I know the ropey for the American. And <laughs> the, 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 yes. No, you were, your diseases and your maladies and how to identify them. Right. I, I, wax, I work with that. Yeah. Wax moth. Um, look, how do you identify for a small hive beetle? What treatments would you use if, if that becomes, you know, think about that too. If you end up with wax moths, what's your IPM for that? If you end up with small hive beetle, what's your IPM for that? Mites, 
so on and so forth. Right. Um, let's see. I want to get off. I want to get off. I made a little list here. So. <laughs> I don't think you can watch. The hands on your speaker, I think. I'm sorry. I was trying to mark that off because I don't want to come back to it. Um, another thing that we should go over is propolis, what propolis is, what it looks like, what it is for. Some of the things that I wrote down, um, you know, propolis is our bee glue. It is usually dark brown. Propolis is made by mixing saliva with beeswax and exudent from botanical sources like plant resin, tree buds, or flowers. What was that word you used? Exudate. Exudate, okay. Mm -hmm. Should I not use that word? No, that's okay. <laughs> I just didn't know what it was. I couldn't catch it. Um. They use the propolis to seal small gaps. Uh, they use it for structure stability, to reduce vibrations, protection from different pathogens. Um, two of the coolest things I think is, is really they use it, it to make your hive more defensible is that propolis can be used to create choke points to make your hive more defensible. Oh. And the other, Thing that I think is really cool about it, uh, which is also disgusting, is that it is used to mitigate putrefaction by sealing carcasses of like mice or lizards or frogs or whatever. I've seen that. I have seen that. It's too cool. <laughs> <laughs> which is totally gross, but I also think that's kind of like, you know, it's kind of really wicked also. And uh, okay, so we went over hive components. We don't really need to go over that, I don't think. Uh, the four things they bring into the hive was one question I it's four things right yes that was on another somebody else's testing I tried on to somebody else's test yeah things that are brought into the hive water and nectar tar and pollen water nectar tar and pollen what was the third one Kathy Tar, what they bring tar. in for the resin. Yeah. Resin. Okay. Resin. Uh, what does the where does the queen produce her queen substance from? With the royal jelly. What was the question now? I'm sorry, I gotta watch my questions. Queen queen substance. Queen substance is produced from her mandibular glands. Royal jelly is produced from the the work the work. Uh, Is there another name or another term they use instead of queen substance? Chemical signature? Or, oh, Is that pheromone. the same as her pheromones? I yes. would think so. Yes. That's what I have written down. Okay. Chemical signature queen substance produced by her mandibular glands. Right. Like I said, I got to be careful with reading the questions. Yes. Don't, 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 saying less sometimes is not, not helpful. <laughs> just answer the question. Just answer the question. That's what Mark Lilly said. Just answer the question. If you, if you go into a lot of detail and then that detail is wrong or gets off track, then it can hurt you. Um, do you know the difference between glucose 
fructose and sucrose. Yeah. Glucose is from plants, fructose from fruit, and sucrose is from nectar. What was the first one? Glucose. And that's from? Plants. Glucose is plants. Fructose is what? Fruit. Okay, uh, plants and fruit, okay. I thought that was fruit. <clears throat> I'm sorry too, I keep trying to clear my throat. Okay. Uh, know what your one to one syrup and your two to one syrups are. Mm -hmm. okay. And when you should feed them. Do both of you um do both of you have like a steady smoker lighting fuel? What what do you do you do anything in particular that you find tried and true that you do all the time? Yes, and we're supposed to bring a smoker and our fuel with us. Yes. And I already had that bagged up. Okay. And my, mine is wood chips and pine needles. I already have okay. it ready to go. And you feel comfy you're good and confident on it. Keep mm -hmm. it going. Okay. So when you go for the, I know you have to they bring protective gear and bring your smoker and your fuel. Do you um open up a hive? You should. You shouldn't have to open up a hive for this portion of the test. Okay. You generally just have a veil because um there are a couple hives on site for people that are taking their certified in the uh, master tests. Okay. But I, I'm, I'm not going to say that you won't 100% have to. I didn't have to. Um, I haven't talked to anybody that had to, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't expect it. Okay. I'll say that. Um, let's see. There's going to be a lot of true false, you know, things right. like that. Really pay attention to those. We could go over a thousand questions and they I may be on there and, and they may not be on there. <laughs> the one um the one that uh Jay Cox sent me was he gave me a sample test. And I the only mistake I made was I didn't read the question right because it said that the answer was I thought it was the things you removed in the winter and the answer was an inner cover, and I'm saying that's wrong. Then I went back and it was the way I read the question because yeah. so that's what I have to be careful about. I did that too. And once I finished, you know, there are two parts of it. You're going to have a written and then like a comprehensive test. So when I finished my written, it's, I mean, it's not a race. You've got, you've got time. So when I finished right. my written test, I just went back through it and I, I, I've made a 97 on my written test, I think. But I did. Mm -hmm. It was a true false. I had I had missed two of them, but I caught them myself. And it was because same thing. I was going through the question. And I think a lot of time I do it. And that might just be ADHD. But I sometimes kind of guess the rest of when I'm reading. I have a really yeah. bad habit of doing that. So yeah. I have to I have to I know that about myself. So I have to really watch. But if you tend to do that, uh, I just recommend going back going back, especially through those true and false and really reading those really good. Um, oh, here it is. Here's the question. 
<clears throat> so you just, this is this is what got me wrong. Okay, the word except. Colonies used for springtime pollination have the following minimum re re requirements except. And it was queen right, four to six frames of brood, enough adult bees to co cover 68 frames, a queen excluder in place. And the answer was, no, that one, that, that was right. I got that one right. Because it's, we don't need a queen excluder. I'm going to find that stupid question. Is it a time test? No. I don't think it is. Well, it is, but it's like four hours. It's from eight. Oh, to gosh. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, don't, you won't need that. Oh, here it is. Proper fall management requires all but, but I didn't read the but part. Oh, uh, yes. Removal of any honey supers that are empty. Remove queen excluders. Removal of inner cover. I'm going, you don't remove the inner cover. All of them are correct. The answer was removal of the inner cover. What letter? Kathy? Pardon me? What letter on your test? I just want to test the theory. It was number 46. No, no, the answer is A, B, C. <clears throat> Or D. Okay, so it goes, proper fall management requires all but. And it was A, removal of honey supers that are empty. B, queen ex remove queen excluder. C, remove inner cover. D, all the above. The answer was C. Yep, that's right. If you right. don't know, pick C. <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny. But it's don't true. Is it really? Mm -hmm. In my test taking experience, that was one thing I was advised to do. If you don't know the right answer for, in a multiple choice, pick C. And you're wow. usually right. Wow. Well, that one had me scratching my head, but that's because I read the question wrong. Mm -hmm. You can also... And that's not, I'm going to give you a piece of advice too, but it's maybe not advice either. I, I think that depends on how you're test taking is that don't spend your time dwelling on something too long. Just go move on, go on to the next one and then go back at the end and read back through. And sometimes it just comes back to you, you know, Yep. especially things come up when you're talking that I think sometimes, or, or just when you're thinking, you know, things just pop up sometimes that you don't think about the first time through or you just have a mental block because you're thinking about it too hard or something, you know, something like that. So can you but, make a dot beside of it, like the number, like something you want to go back to? Yeah. So you don't have to. Yeah, I don't think that I don't think that there's any rules or anything against that, but just don't forget to go back to it. That's that's the only like. Yeah, I just yep. thought it'd make it easier to find what you wanted to yeah. go back and research. <clears throat> yeah, maybe that might work too, like a star or something to make you mentally pick it out when you're going through so you just don't read over it. Um, so let's see. Did you have anything on your test about bee bread? Hmm. I don't remember if I had anything about bee bread specifically. One of the things I do uh Maybe I did. What is bee bread? Yeah, I think I did. What is bee bread? Pollen, nectar, and enzymes capped over. Okay. Yeah, saliva. Saliva. What's it for? It's to feed the babies. <laughs> feed the young brood. And it's a protein content. Uh... 
Oh, are SU procedure queens better than emergency queens? You mean SU procedures on the top, what, what form spells, spells on the bottom? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, maybe I should rephrase that one. Are SU procedure queens better than emergency replacement queens? Quality wise, I would say yes. Why? Because they're planned and they get to pick the best um, eggs to make them to, to develop into queens. I'd say maybe if you replaced it, you can get a better, you change the hygienics of the hive, with different genes and, and maybe improve the hive. Changing the genetics. I just say that because I'm, uh, I guess I'm giving you an answer. Yeah. Super procedure queens are better than emergency replacement queens because they receive longer or larger quantities of royal jelly. Okay. That's all? <laughs> that's not all. Okay. But that's the same. I can't. I, f I feel like sometimes I, I want to bite my tongue off. When you're on the hot seat, Deb. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know. I feel that way every Thursday. <laughs> I know. I feel like that. And I try to like, I, I made notes and I want to not be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Um, oh, let's see. What is another thing that you'll have to do is identification. Um. Are you familiar? Do you do you ladies use different types of feeders or different types of yeah? Um, do you use different types of feeders? Are you familiar <laughs> with all of them? Yeah, I'm, I'm yes. familiar with almost all of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was actually one of the questions that I one of the questions I missed was um identifying a top hive feeder mm -hmm. because it it didn't look like I thought it was going to look. I've used them. I know what a top feeder is, but it didn't look like I thought it would look. They so, have some old equipment they pull out sometimes. Yes, they sure do. And you might want to know the difference in hive tools. Okay. Yeah. The, the difference in what, Deb? Hive, hive tools. Hive tools. Hive tools. Okay. What's the hook for, you know, different, the different I just, types? I just got that one that's everything. Yeah, but I think mm -hmm. they want to know like J hook, you know, specific. Right. Some are specific. J hooks for what these are for? Right, ones for for loosening the frames, ones for picking up the corners. Um, parts for smashing wasps and yellow jackets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so true. Oh, there's a high beetle. <laughs> Or a spider. I try to always get those little jumpy spiders. spiders. What's the little hole, oval hole at the top of a of an inner cover? Put a feeder on that. But what's the name and the reason? Ventilation. There was another purpose back in the olden days. Ventilation. I thought it was for, thought it was for feeding in the olden days. For a porter, a bee porter, or a bee escape. I I used a bee escape on that one time too. I know exactly what you're talking about. You mm. snap it in there, the little yes. white thing, or yellow. Pardon me. Or yellow. Is that what it's called? No. You might no, see a yellow. <laughs> oh well, or a yeah, or a yellow. I thought you said or, or a yellow. yellow. <laughs> yeah, I had, mine was white. I'm, I'm We're thinking. from West Virginia, Kathy. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> I, I probably still have mine. It was the first thing I I used to um get bees out of the hive. I missed that one. That was one of my misses. Uh, different types of queen cages. Yeah. Uh, you might have to identify a plunger. 
Yes. Go to plunger it. Okay. Like for marking queens, that's, that's what they're called, plungers. I didn't know that that's what those were called either. Uh, at the time, I did not know that's what those I were called. Learn how to mark a queen. I want to get the balls to mark a queen. That's my problem. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to kill it. Um, help me out here, Kathy. I mean, uh, Deb. Yeah, I'm thinking. I, I was trying to think of like any other identification. We've gone over a lot, and it's really not. The, it's not mm -hmm. difficult. It's just all these little things that are just. Okay, so let me go a couple of, that I that I went over. I went through this test that he sent me, and. Since That's really super nice that you got a, a a test because nobody sent me one of those. It's uh these the true and false you had to circle correct uh yeah. name the three types of adult bees in the hive, um name two reasons why a colony would produce a new queen. To procedure or emergency, um lame worker bee can produce both female and male. Female workers and drones, that's false. Say that again. A lame, a lame worker. Work, lame worker bee can produce both female workers and drones, and that's false because you can't, right. she can only do right. drones. She can only do drones. So these are, a lot of these are true and false that I got. Okay. Name the three stages of development of honeybee brood, egg larva pupil, pupa. Oh, this is a small. Place items in the correct order from the top to the bottom, you would find them in the beehive. Yes, so I remember that one. Yeah, that's the that's the whole setup of the hive. Mm -hmm. uh, a true, true or false. This is a cute one. A package of bees contains capped pupa and uncapped eggs. False. False. It's a package. Okay. Match the honey race the correct core co correct uh characteristics of an Italian, a uh, Caucasian, a Cornolian. Oh. And the one of them was general mm. small bees, dark circle around, which is a Caucasian. And that's a I'm trying to read these. Okay. I didn't have any questions about honeybee races. Okay. I'm not saying that you won't. There are different tests. I do know that, but it was, I did. It, it was pretty easy. You just had to pick a match. So. Yeah. True or false? When I when I work when I working a hive, the center frame should be removed first, so I have a better chance of immediately finding the queen. False. Okay. If the colony has depleted honey stores in early March, rather than opening the hive in place to, to place an, an ex, internal feeder, a boardman feeder should be used to feed the colony sugar. Water. Read that one more time. Okay. A colony, if a colony has depleted honey stores in early March, rather than opening the hive to place an internal feeder, a boardman feeder should be used to feed the colony sugar water. That's a true or false question? Yes. I feel like that is kind of tricky because I think that would yeah. probably depend on where you live. Yeah, right. I, I, think I, would I wouldn't, also I wouldn't feed them sugar practice. water at the beginning of March. But the, no. I wouldn't use, I wouldn't shoot. So I said false and false is the answer because I wouldn't give them sugar water in March. Yeah, me either. Yeah. I don't think most people in West Virginia should be doing it. No. <laughs> in March. Okay, here's a, another true or false. Even as temperatures begin to reach 65 degrees in April, the hive should not be open for cleaning or maintenance until at least mid-May. False. That is false. Mm-hmm. I think we're all basically this, like you used to see me, I'm, I'm staying away from my hive. I know that soon, but not yet. Okay. Swarm cells are usually found on the face of the comb 
while super seizure cells are found near the bottom of the comb or of the brew train chamber. False. Right. It's exactly that. Those, those are backwards. Yes. Okay. Proper fall management consists of all but checking highs for proper arrangement of hive equipment, proper high ventilation, adequate for food stores, adequate colony strains, all the above are correct. Repeat that. Okay. <clears throat> proper fall management consists of all but checking highs for proper arrangement of, of hive equipment, proper high ventilation, adequate food stores, adequate colony strength. All the, the above. Is, all, all, the, all the above is correct. It's all the above. Right. Okay. Robbing of honey can be prevented by working bees quickly and avoiding expo exposed frames of honey, placed removed frames of honey in the adjoining open medium super, C, work, working hives in mid-afternoon when foragers are out. D, feeding adjoining hives in midday with external feeders. The answer is A, work quickly. The rest of them aren't. Repeat, we're quickly. just re read C again. C said working hives in mid-afternoon while foragers are out. That is an option, but that is an option too. What was B? B was place removed frames of honey in an adjoining open medium super. That's that would, not right. would that would promote robbing. Right. Yeah. I would question A and C on that one. I would too. But go ahead and put what your paper is telling you. Okay. And then it gives me a page number to go back and check it on. So that's what I was doing. If I wasn't sure, I would go back. Yeah. And he gave me a page number. Okay. Good. Yeah. Review that. Yeah. Okay. Honey is a source of carbohydrate. Honey is the source of carbohydrates for the honeybee. Pollen is the source of protein. Right. Where's Michelle? I wrote that, put it on your, put it on this whole, I gave it a whole slide. Yeah, I know you did. Because <laughs> I tried to remember I that. Couple, you, know, you might have that a couple different times in different, right. even if you have the same thing, it might be carbs are what? Carbs, yeah. are, carbs are, carbs are honey. Protein is pollen. Pollen is protein. A matchstick inserted in the larva and withdraw the cell with with a strung out in a ropey fashion indicates American frail brood, Varroa, chalkboard, normal brood, Amer American. The answer is American frail brood. I just gave that way the answer. Sorry, but I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fumadol B has been approved for management of A. Varroa. B, American foul brood, C, European foul brood, D, Nozema. Nozema. Did you say, yeah. did you say Fumagellin? Yes. Fumagel? Yes. Yeah. Fumagel B. And that's for Nozema. Yeah. Yes. Because we had it for a while, then they took it away for a while, and now they've got it back, and that's where the B comes in. They, yeah. they change the formulation a little bit and then give it back to us. Because my original thing was, no, we're not allowed to use food Magellan at all. Well, at the time I took it, we weren't, you know. Yeah. When I okay. first took my first beekeeping classes, we had it. And then it went away for a while. In fact, I just bought some a few weeks ago. So when I do my drenches in the um in the spring I can put that in and that's one of the things I was talking about with your IPM it uh -huh. would yeah. be like a good idea to go through like nozema foul brood so on so forth and identify your problem determine your threshold assess your options 
select and apply controls because you might have um you might have other questions based on that as well you know <clears throat> kind of a a tricky like a breakdown they might give you a and b of of that and then you might have to enter you know what c or d is okay. yeah i remember something i missed was slum gum oh slum gum that's a good one that's that's the crud left over from when you render wax yep yeah all that might, black gooey. might see that <laughs> yeah okay and you're the wax queen now. Uh, you're the wax queen. Oh, she's not talking, she's yeah. not talking to me. <laughs> I'm talking to Deb. She missed that one, and she's the wax queen. Yeah, I mixed it up with propolis. Not pro. Yeah, with propolis. Because it was a just a wad. Yeah. It wasn't like when we render it out that it was just a wad. And you might think a little bit about an old, old, scruffy, half-labeled brown bottle. It was one of mine. And that was the that's where the fumagellin come in. Because it was a very old bottle. It was an old way they applied it. Hmm. And that would probably would have been something that I missed, because, uh, but I didn't, I don't think I had that. Was it but, the one with the yellow label, Deb? I don't even think you could identify the label, and I don't even yeah. think you could it even a, read a, what it said a, on a, there. They would have had brown, it marked out. They would have had it marked out. It was a brown bottle. The old one was a brown bottle, and it had a yellow and green label on it. That, that might have been. It was a pretty rough looking bottle. <laughs> I think I old, still have one. Old equipment, huh? Yeah. Well, we, and, the B the B escape alone is a very people don't use those anymore, right. do they? The B well, I mean, escape. I do. You put the oh, I use those, but I I make my own. I make the triangle boards. Right, but that's that's what people do now. They don't use those little plastic things that you put no, in the not. Yeah. And you'll think about um, those frame pictures, you know, that has diseases on it or, yeah. or some, in my first test, I remember having some frames and it says, tell me what's wrong with these frames. Mm -hmm. And it was various problems. Yes. And then I think the second round I had was just copies of frames and those were hard because they, they are hard because they're black and white and they weren't very Ooh. clear Ooh. so that's study pretty good yes that's one of the things about your IPN like look at all of those any kind of pest any kind of milady you could get when you go through your book write down what it is what it looks like what you treat it with right and then you know the outcome of that bring out the highlighter pen again yeah. same thing with your same thing with all your treatments go through all those treatments look at the, even if you don't use it look at the packaging look what the packaging looks like not what it says you need to know what it says but you're not gonna you're not gonna be like this is apivar <laughs> Yeah, They're just going to hold the packet. As a piece of tape over the letters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where they're just crudely marked out with a Sharpie is what mine yeah, were. That, that was one. <laughs> mine was a big old bucket. 41. Okay. Page 41. Yeah, I've been, I've been going through 41, haven't I? Okay. They mean for this to be something that you really think. They they, mm -hmm. they didn't make it to be automatic and easy and, you know, they want you thinking. Yes. But Where it's also this... stuff you know. It is also, especially the two of you, it is yeah. stuff you know. Um, Where did the but it's also stuff that you can forget easily, too, you know. 
The developmental stages is also really important. I can't stress that chart enough. Yeah. Um, that you you have you might have a situation where you have to fill in part of that, or yeah. they have some of it filled in, and then they ask you, and then later on they say, "How many days is a is a worker be in the pupa stage?" Just randomly later on. So. What was your question? I memorized Boo? that chart. I memorized that chart for like, so I would just repeat it to myself. Like Me too. I'm living constant. this chart right there. So <laughs> I did for like two whole weeks and I can't even do it now. I still have my little, you write it down, but you I knew it. I knew it then. I, knew I think when I got there and got my test and come to it, I wrote the chart. I did because too. I, I did it, too. put it in my head and then used yep. it a couple times. Yep. And you had your chart backwards. I start with the, the queen and work my what the way it is in the book. And you started with the. I know. I I tell you what I do too. I have like my study guide that I made for myself, and I have it backwards too. But that was the best one that I could find online to put in a slide that was accurate. Because there's all kinds yeah. of charts, but some of them are just you know six or or fourteen. That's why, they don't say that's why I went for this book because I know. What's in this book is God on this test. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. 18.6 is the answer. <laughs> it is I know the that answer. answer because my honey that I'm entering this show is 18.2. <laughs> it's not just 18, it's 18.6. And you'll have, cool. you know, those identifiers we were talking about. I just kind of jotted a few things down, but you may have to, you know, write three things that you can identify a worker B. Mm -hmm. You know, those those little just tidbits of things you already know. Propolis, that ha that comes up a few different times. Makes a nice tincture. <laughs> I know Michelle's got a good one going. What? Tincture. Your tincture, but you made like a tea bag out of it. Yeah. I like that idea. Oh, a tea bag. That is a good idea. Yeah, because yeah. then it hardly has any grit in the bottom of the jar. Uh -huh. Yeah. Did you just use like a coffee filter i used some cheesecloth and then i had a couple of white tool bags like you put sachets in oh mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah that hadn't been used yeah and you could probably use cotton make little mm -hmm. cotton bags they make little tea bag things that are white and they got a little string at the top because phyllis gave us one year a tea that was a bunch of loose different things mm -hmm. and then you put them into that little bag and that's how you steep it instead of using one of the metal tea, tea balls yeah you need, to be, tea ball. you need to be careful though because some of those tea bags are treated mm. why couldn't With, you use a tea ball Say what? I think it would. I think it would be hard to clean afterwards. Uh -huh. You're probably right. Yeah, you're right because it gets pretty gritty. My eyedroppers are always getting stopped up. Oh, look at that! A picture of laying worker. I know what that looks like. Multiple legs. <laughs> right. I'm having a hard time putting them in my head between which test, you know. <laughs> Right, because you've taken them all. Yeah. Which one was the hardest? The last one? Actually, I think it was certified. I was just going to say that that's what I heard. That's what everybody says is that certified was the harder one. I've been, that's what I think that's where I have been too, because I've been kind of cramming and prepping for that which I'm not going to do until fall now, but 
Um, bum, 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 bum. Do either of you ladies have any questions that you can think of? I have a question. It's not related to the test questions, but to the um, who makes up the tests? Where do the questions come from? Steve Roth and Steve Roth. Mark Lilly. I think Steve actually made the test, but Mark Lilly is his sidekick. Right. Yeah. Mark Mark is allowed to grade. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that Steve made all the tests himself. Uh and back then it was um Janet Clayton was was part of that in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Steve's the one who reaches out to you. Yeah. And he will not dicker at all. He he has an answer in his head, and that's all he will say. He he doesn't mm -hmm. dicker about it. He'll say, Nope, this is the answer. <laughs> you know, and that's that's where he goes. Yeah, you've you've told me that. And in all purposes, though. What that book was, what, 2008? They're getting a little outdated. But yes. yeah, that, and so you have to answer by that book, regardless of what we've learned since. Right. What book are you speaking of? The Beekeeper's the, Handbook? Um, the Beekeeper's yeah. Handbook of the fourth Penn edition. State. The Penn State. Yeah, Penn State is for the apprentice. So I'm, I'm thinking of the um, Beekeeper's Handbook. It was 2008, I think. How do you get the, a copy of the Penn State book? Well, we here, we, you order from Penn State. I think Amazon might have a couple, but you order it straight from Penn State. I yeah. have a PDF file. Oh, that's you right. You do. Right. Yeah, I'm that's what I have. Bit. I never did. I just, I just printed it out at work. It's in the file home. section, boo. I'm sending oh, it to okay. Benita now. Okay. Or she she tell her she'll send it to you too. That's right, because I give it to the kid down the road. Yes. My copy. My printer is not that strong. <laughs> when my club here teaches beginner classes, they order them and they provide it as part of their um, fee. You know, they it's if right. you order it by the case, it was ten dollars a book. Yours was a whole lot more than that, wasn't it, Kathy? Yeah. Well, you know, I went back and looked. Well, I went on Amazon. I Then I go to my club, and they were selling them for $15. Uh-huh. So they were making 5 bucks. Now, they might be 12 by now. Um, I don't really know because I wasn't involved with beginner beekeeping classes this year. So they may, they may Michelle, have gone up. Michelle, yes. I just sent it to you. Let me know if it gets Thank to you. Thank you. And Bonita, too. You're welcome. It's a cousin. Ghost one is Rick at home. Huh? I said, Phyllis, one does Rick at home. Oh. <laughs> uh, I didn't hear three to, <laughs> I didn't hear that either. Three to four weeks. Oh, okay. It yeah. kind of like went in and out. It was like rah, 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 rah. and I was like, <laughs> what did she say? Did my um starlet go in and out? It did. Maybe just for like it was just like a, a like a fizzle, but it does I did not <laughs> decipher any of what you said. <laughs> Nobody <either>. did. <laughs> I could tell. So can uh, I see something? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> I got mine, Phyllis. Good. And Benita, this is all voluntary. It is not a requirement to be a beekeeper. It is not a requirement for anything. It is just a program right. the state puts on for a studying and it's not free and it's totally up to you if you want to go through the process or not what was it six, Ooh, yeah. excuse, tell us what was it six dollars i think five dollars yeah five dollars yes but you they always have it which i think they're changing that right but they always have it as a in the conference so you have to buy a ticket to the go to conference correct, correct. before you can take the test which i think is absurd well yes, who it is 
Well, one of the reasons I want to go to the comp, that's why I didn't do, well, I was doing this, but I thought the honey show, to learn to be a honey judge was expensive. Because you're already paid to go to the conference. Yes. So I thought that was, I thought that was a lot. But I'm hoping to get some, maybe some supplies and equipment while I'm at the conference. Uh-huh. You always yeah. have vendors. Like maybe I'm hope I'm hoping to see some right away. So <clears throat> I'm hoping but to bring seen to any... get clubs. Has anybody seen any just... uh, Go ahead. um deals on the the new compact OA guns from what oh, mm -hmm. I got it in January. Uh, well, I died in January and came back to life, so I right. couldn't go. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I got it in Sorry January. Little, but, wow. Poor girl. Somebody bought a refurbished one of the one I have, and I forget who it was, but love it. Yeah. Sarah. Sarah. I don't like his Planahan. gun. His gun. That I borrowed one this last summer. And it burnt my my bottom boards. I did oh. not care for it at all. I got to watch out for the burn. You're right, but I own it, and I it takes care of my mites, so it can he's burn making bit. now a little um uh like a little almost like Adapter. a little sleeve that that you no know, it kind of goes on there, and it keeps it keeps your copper it's like a buffer. A buffer is a better right. word. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm. I'm, yeah. I'm going to talk to him. At, I'll talk to him about that. And I need more cups. My cups are starting to get worn out. Well, see, yeah. the new compact doesn't have cups. It's got the plunger. Oh, Phyllis, but, I didn't get it. But I saw they have a new messenger? website, Kathy. Yeah. Huh? You didn't get it. Pardon me. No. Sorry, I talked to Michelle. Michelle, you didn't get it. No. <clears throat> I didn't get it on Messenger. No, I gave it to you in email. Sorry. Oh, okay. Let me check yeah. that. I didn't know if you could down. Well, you could download <laughs> it to your phone, but I didn't know if you wanted it bigger on your laptop. I have it. Okay. Thank cool. you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. They have a new website, Kathy. Who does? Larabi's. Oh, okay. And they had the accessory. I saw that just when you said cups, they had the accessories and plungers and just different mm -hmm. <clears throat> different things that you could get on there that were a little bit easier, it looked like. Yeah, I saw that because I got an email from him. I get emails from him, kind of him and um, Laps Bees. I get a lot of, in my dollar forty one in credit. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Mine's $1.82. <laughs> but anyway, I know that I can get cups from him. And yeah, you know, you I can. Think he has them for sale. He, he usually brings them with him, and I'm going to find out about getting getting that cobbler to stop him burning my bottom boards. Hmm. They were well, making if them somebody, for the if new somebody hears or sees that conference that they're having a sale, well, let me know and I'll Venmo you. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm just looking to upgrade. I only have a wand, which also oh, burns gosh. a lot of my shit all the time. But I don't want to pay five hundred dollars for one either. <laughs> so I really wanted yeah. to get one in January, and then you know that didn't happen. Well, I'm going to be talking to the guy that that I love my gun, John mm -hmm. Oliver, and Michelle has one, and she loves yep. hers because I, I have I have one that I'm going to send off that a guy gave me that I'm going to ask him to fix, and then when I get that back, then I'm going to send my other one back, which I've had for four years. And three years, four years, and it just needs tuned up, tightened up. Mm -hmm. Rick has tried, but it it keeps twisting. Then he's like, "Yeah, send it back to me." But um, his is a lot cheaper, and I can ask him. I I should just call him tomorrow and ask him if he is still making because he only makes a few now. Yeah. But, uh, do you, I mean I think it's like two seventy five instead of four ninety nine. Yeah. I think when I bought I mean, my if I had like a lot more hives, I wouldn't care to spend that, but I don't have enough hives to justify spending five hundred dollars for this. Yeah, when I, I just bought don't. mine, it was two seventy five, I think. It wasn't well, it was all the normal guns are two seventy five. 
No, when I bought mine, I think I've had mine for three years now. I paid, I paid two seventy five for it. Gosh, if you've had yours for three years, and I've probably had mine for five or six years. Yeah, you have. My John, my John. Yeah. This is my. Yeah, this John is my third. Yeah, yeah this John is my is. third year with it. I'm hmm. pretty sure. Hmm. All last year, the year before, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how much um, Larobi or Larabi, whatever how his his guns are. I think they're like three hundred. I'm not sure. Yeah, mine was have, under three hundred. I don't but, support him anymore because I tried it and I didn't like his gun. So, well, if I can get a a, a copper to stop the burning of the bottom board, then it works just fine. And he does sell refurbished ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Sarah just bought a refurbished one. Sarah yeah. McCallaghan. McCallaghan. So that might be your your move too. Yeah, I want I watch, but they just get snagged up like. Yeah, you know. Well, she's a tech girl, and I think she's probably had a it's probably a program that she designed mm -hmm. or something that said probably you know, it just popped Create up. an alarm <laughs> i yep. think it's some sometimes i think it's just you know luck of the draw like you go through there yeah. and you, sure. you know you do and sometimes i'm a lot more hot and heavy on it i, I mean it's like reading sometimes i read three yep. books a week and sometimes i read one book in three weeks yep, you know, same. Just, yep same. same are you guys talking about a mite treatment gun yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, I had two wands. I donated one back to my club here for people to borrow, and I sold the other one. I broke one and gave the other one away. Yeah. So. Well, mine's out on loan. Lori has it. He charged me twenty five dollars for a swarm box. So I, I so I sold him my wand for twenty five dollars, and it was a wash. <laughs> there you go. That's the way to do it. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Anyway, I put up some wasp traps today. Oh, oh good. Yeah. I got one up. I think I, think I put six out this mm -hmm. year. Did you? I need some more I bananas. So. Yeah. Yep. Um. Well, thank you, Tiffany. I really appreciated that. It was a great one. You're really welcome. I'm not a good teacher. The silent. Oh, you, you were fine. Perfect. You were good. Perfectly. Michelle, I should send you this that I got from Jay Cox. How do I? Yeah, I yeah, that, that's super nice. That's helpful. You should definitely. Yeah, that's, yeah I, I gotta send this to you. <clears throat> okay, thank you. What I'm gonna do is 